Welcome to another episode of Be Tailored, where today we're going to be addressing any kind of steering and suspension slop in the front end of the TL240. So today we're going to be installing some tension rods from ISR, and we're also going to be installing some steering rack bushings to help tighten up any slop that's in there. So let's get to it. Thank you, Desiree, for helping me out. <laughs> you always look so excited about this stuff. I just want to help. Um, we're just standing here. So since the TL240 didn't come with any tension rods, it was pretty necessary to get some new ones. So we've got some ISR offset ones, which will give you a little more angle if you have the right supporting mods for that. Um, but it should be pretty simple, just bolt in stuff. It's gonna lay on top of the lower control arm here, bolt it in to tension rod holder. Power brace? It's not a power brace. I'm not sure what this is, but we're gonna bolt it in. So like I said before, this is gonna be a super easy install. Normally, if you have your stock tension rods or whatever tension rods you have on there, you'd measure them up, compare the lengths of them, and make sure they're the same distance to save you some alignment time at the shop. But since we don't have any tension rods to mock up against to get a good length for this, I'm just gonna zero them out. So this should give us a lot of caster, I think. Um, and then we should be able to go from there. They're really adjustable, um, so we're not gonna have any problems or anything with that. No problems. No problems. Pro tip, make sure your uh, tension rod's on top of the control arm before you start putting this guy in. So if you go to line up your tension rod and these bolts don't line up over here, you can always adjust this out. Make sure it fits in. Super simple. ISR was nice enough to supply us with some new bolts for the control arm, but I may have lost the nuts. I'm not sure if they provide those, so just a heads up if you do get some ISR arms. Could not find the nuts for these bolts that they gave us. Now once we've put some nuts on the bottom of these bolts down here, tighten everything up, we should be good to go. So the torque specs for the tension rod on the S13 are about 90 foot-pounds up front here and then about 80 back here on the lower control arm. So the final piece of the puzzle is going to be putting in some new bushings for the steering rack down there. So we have some new polyurethane bushings for the steering rack to mount to the K-frame. And we also have a steering linkage bushing, which is solid instead of rubber, that we're going to be putting in right up there. So a little amateur tip that I have for you guys is that when you're putting in the new bushings, you don't have to unbolt the subframe like I did when putting in my diff bushing back in the day. All you have to do to undo the steering rack is come underneath the car and you'll find these two bolts here which bolt the steering rack into the K-frame. So we're going to unbolt those, get the steering rack loose, and then put in our new bushings. Now that the bolts are off, we can go ahead and pop off the brackets. So we've got the steering rack loose. What I've done so far to unbolt this and make it loose so that I can reach the bushings is unbolt these two brackets up here. I've also, if you have a stock setup, unbolt the high pressure power steering bracket down here. And then also there's a 10 mil bolt on this side that you have to un uh, undo to get the power steering cooler free. You can definitely tell the difference in stiffness compared to the old uh, stock bushings with these new polyurethane ones. And so that's really going to tighten up our steering feel. Here's the old one, all cracked and weathered. And then here's our new one. A lot of play in this one, where it's not so much in the other one. Now before we put these new bushings in, we want to make sure to clean out all the crevices where the bushing is going to be sitting. So there's going to be a lot of dirt and maybe a little oil and stuff in there. We want to make sure to clean all that out so that that bushing has a nice place to sit. You could go way more in depth with cleaning this using a wire brush and whatnot. I'm just using a rag to kind of get any big particles that I can out of here. So with the energy suspension steering rack bushing kit, you actually get three pieces. You get two of these circular pieces here and then one of these kind of teardrop ones. What you need are these two. Uh, they just come with an extra one of these because it's kind of a universal kit. So I believe this also applies, this kit also applies to the 300ZX and maybe a few other chassis as well. I've heard that it's a good idea to maybe put some grease on here. I'm kind of going to skip that step. Um, if it kind of comes back to bite me, then I might hear some squeaking, and then I can just 
go through the pain of reinstalling these with some grease. So it turns out there is a difference between these. One's bigger than the other. So he's the bigger one. Might be easier to put it on the other way. Yeah, it looks like the best bet is to orientate this so that this gap is going to be facing towards the firewall because there's more metal on this side where this bushing is going to be contacting as opposed to the other side. Now the last thing we'll do is bolt this all up and that's exactly the same process in reverse as put, taking this all apart. While I'm at it, I'm also going to install this solid steering rack bushing which is going to go right where this steering column is, right in the follow firewall. Now before I put those brackets back on for the steering rack, what we're going to do is go ahead and install these ISR tie rods. Now these use S14 end links which I think are a little beefier, they might be a little longer as well. But these are brand new tie rods that I got used for a good deal, so we're going to put these on. These can give you a bit more steering angle if you wish by use of this little gold ring on top here which slips on and off. I'm going to run it and see what it's like um, if I don't like it, which I don't know, we'll see. I may take them off, but you know, we'll give it a try. Now instead of dropping the front subframe to get that steering column bushing out, I'm trying my best just to mess with the steering rack so that we can put in that new bushing. So I think that's going to involve undoing those brackets like I did. And that also might involve taking off the stock 240 tie rods here so that we can have a lot of clearance with the steering rack and move it whatever way we want to. So having figured all that out, it's going to be a good time to go ahead and put in these new tie rods. I was going to wait for a bit, but what better time than now? So in order to take out the tie rod, which essentially is this shaft that goes into the steering rack, we're going to undo this cotter pin here, slide that out, undo this bolt, and it should pop right out. Alright, after a little bit of work with some PB blaster and a hammer, these tie rods are all set to go out. Now we have full range of the steering rack. Now I wanted to make a point of when I disconnect the tie rod from the hub that I wanted the hubs to be as straight as possible. It was kind of hard since there's no steering wheel in the car, but I just kind of eyeballed it to make sure that everything was straight. It may not matter all that much, but I just wanted to make sure that things were straight before I took them off so that I'd be sure they were straight when I put them back on. So now that we have the steering column bushing out of the firewall, I kind of wanted to show you guys the differences between the two and why upgrading to an aftermarket one is a worthy upgrade for your 240SX or just your car in general. So the OEM piece is made of rubber, there's a bit of play in it. Uh, this is good for soaking up any vibrations that comes through your wheel and gives you a nice comfortable feeling. The average person isn't really going to care how direct their steering feel is. Um, but that's going to give you a bit of slop right there, so we're going to upgrade to this diff full metal solid steering bushing which has no play in it obviously and it's going to make our steering a lot more direct more responsive and more precise uh, it's a very cheap and very worthy upgrade for your car because it's very easy to do all you have to do is pull this steering uh, column out of your firewall and install this guy it's four little bolts and if you don't have access to your engine bay through um, sitting in here. I don't have an engine in here, so it's really easy for me to access. You can actually access this bushing from the interior of the car. FR Sport does a great write-up on this, so if you can't access it from the engine bay, highly recommend you check out their uh, walkthrough. Now I have done a video on installing these aftermarket bushings before where I actually dropped the subframe to install it rather than dropping the steering rack. And I actually think I prefer to drop the subframe for some reason. I just remember it being a lot easier. Um, but it's all based on personal preference, whatever you need to do, drop the steering rack, drop the subframe, go from the interior, it's all up to you. But if you want a more detailed uh, description on how to install this, go check out the video which is going to be in the top right hand corner if you're watching this through YouTube. Hopefully that will have any information that you may need. Now one thing to note when you're upgrading to the aftermarket piece is that you're going to have to retain all of your brass and plastic fittings from the OEM bushing, so make sure you don't lose these. Uh, they fit in pretty easily since it's all the exact machine cut. Sometimes you may have to press them in, but for both of my cases before, I've never had to press them in. They go straight in with finger strength. Now I ran one of these in my S13 for about a year and I highly recommend it because it's such a cheap and easy upgrade to do and it's really beneficial to have a solid feel in your steering to really know what your tires are doing. Alright, we have those polyurethane steering rack bushings in and that solid metal steering column bushing in. Now that's all that's left to do is install the tie rods. So once you have the tie rod boot removed, what you can do is 
in order to remove the actual tie rod itself right here, you want to get a couple of these guys if you don't have wrenches big enough. One to clamp here and then one to clamp here and then just twist and it should come right out. Now the reason you want to use two wrenches is because when you go to twist the tie rod to get it off, you don't want to twist the whole steering rack assembly with it. So the new tie rods are out. I just wanted to stack them up next to my new tie rods to kind of see how they compare. I noticed that these tie rods did have a ring for more steering angle, so it makes me wonder if my old tie rods are some kind of aftermarket piece or if he just kind of threw these on here. And same as these ones, I'll probably run them with the ring since the car had them on there before. Um, but these definitely needed replacing. The boots are all tore up and really worn. And so we're upgrading to our ISR Heim joint tie rods. I think they're Heim joints. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments down below if I didn't if I didn't classify this part correctly. Either way, they're solid, they're gonna be great. Let's get to it. One thing you wanna make sure to do after cleaning off your threads down here is to make sure you apply a little bit of blue thread locker just to make sure that the tie rod's not gonna go anywhere when you put it on. I wanna use blue because that way I'll be able to get it off with hand tools. If you use the red stuff, it may take a little more umph to get it out. Alright, so we finally have the inner tie rod installed, wasn't too hard. Next bit we have to install is the outer tie rod, shouldn't take too much. All we have to do is thread in the outer tie rod onto the inner tie rod and seize it down with that nut, bolt it to the hub and we should be good to go. Alright, both tie rods are now installed, now all we have to do is tighten down these two nuts, put a new cotter pin in, and we should be set. These tie rods here should pair nicely with our new offset tension rods to give us just a little more angle. And now to put the icing on the cake, we have our fully adjustable D2 coilovers, courtesy of Carol. You will live on. It is 100% likely that the alignment is going to be off after installing all these new suspension and steering components. So it's critical that we hit the alignment shop as soon as this car hits the road so that we can see the full capability that these parts have. So our front end suspension and steering should be pretty set for the Teal 240. We've installed tension rods, new tie rods, new bushings for the steering rack and the steering column. And we even have fully adjustable D2 coilovers all around. So pretty excited to see how all these new parts are going to make the car kind of transform as far as handling goes once it gets back on the road. But I think that's it for this episode. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, uh, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'd happily appreciate seeing what you have to say. If you aren't subscribed, please consider hitting that red subscribe button. Like the video if you got something out of it. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.